Welcome to my presentation on the Community College Humanities Association. This presentation will go over some of the main features of this association, including a little bit about the history, mission, and purpose of the association, some of the activities and work the association has been engaged in in support of the humanities, and a little bit of information about how to join if you are so inclined. The CCHA was founded in 1979 and is dedicated to preserving and strengthening the humanities in two-year colleges. It is currently housed at the Community Colleges of Baltimore County. In addition to functioning as a national association, it also has five regional geographic subdivisions um, within the United States, and these regional divisions also do work to support the humanities at a more local level. Members of the CCHA can also become involved in three committees, the Membership Committee, Diversity Committee, and the Dean Force Committee. In addition to its affiliations with community colleges throughout the United States, it is also affiliated with several national groups, including the American Association of Community Colleges, the American Council of Learned Societies, Modern Language Association, the National Humanities Alliance, the National Coalition for History, Organization of American Historians, the American Historical Association, the Biographers International Organization, the New Jersey Educators Association, and more. It also has a close relationship with the National Endowment for the Humanities. Although the CCHA's website did not clearly label this as the mission statement for their association, this statement is found on their About Us page, and I think very succinctly defines what this association is all about. So, the CCHA serves as a catalyst for defining the issues which face humanity faculty and administrators today, finding solutions to problems in the field, and establishing a communications network for humanists. And I really feel that that communications network is really key to um, the kind of work that this association is interested in, um, in terms of encouraging discourse uh, between humanities faculty at different institutions throughout the U.S. and throughout the world. And again, this purpose statement is also taken from the CCHA's About Us page. And again, I'm not going to read the entire statement, but it highlights some of the activities that the CCHA is involved in, again, which I think really just really promote the professional discourse between humanities faculty, um, including the um, creating a regular forum for the exchange of ideas on significant issues in the humanities and higher education, as well as to encourage professional work of faculty and administrators in the humanities. So they sponsor conferences and seminars. And they also have publications as well as awards to recognize um, faculty who are really working um, in the humanities and working to make those kinds of connections. So some of the major activities that the CCHA sponsors for its members include conferences, they have both national and regional conferences every other year. So one year it'll be the national conference, and then the next year they do the regionals, and then they switch off. Um, so the most recent ones in 2018 were regional conferences. They are currently in the planning process for their 2019 national conference. Um, but just for an example of some of the things that they did there, um, the 2018 Central Division held theirs in Louisville and the title of the conference was Paradise Found, and they were accepting papers and presentations um, in some of the following categories, including traditional humanities, digital humanities, social justice, critical thinking, environmental issues, culture and diversity, STEM and STEAM, the art, evaluating media, civic engagement and democracy, social media, and information literacy. So, a real broad spectrum of some of the topics and concerns within the humanities right now. Um, they also offer a bunch of resources on their website and more to the members that you can't see without logging in. 
but um, some of those include a happenings page where community colleges are encouraged to post information about events and conferences regarding the humanities. Um, they also link to external events that are happening, um, such as things that are happening in the, um, and being hosted by the National Endowment for the Humanities. Um, they also have an opportunities page, which includes links to fellowships, summer institutes, and grant opportunities um, to help alert members about some of those opportunities. Um, and then they also include the links to other humanities organizations that they've partnered with, again, to kind of support and promote um, communication between different organizations um, to really encourage that professional discourse. And finally, they also have publications, which is one of the more traditional forms of scholarly interaction. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that on the next slide. So in addition to the professional activities on the previous slide, the CCHA does engage with publications as a main way of, to communicate um, between different humanities professionals throughout the United States. They have um, three main publication activities, um, the first of which is their flagship journal, which is the Community College Humanities Review. Um, they've recently undergone a redesign and restarted their issues with issue one being in 2016. Um, and according to their website, along with the publication's historical penchant for outstanding peer-reviewed scholarship, the CCHR is now publishing essays on pedagogy, faculty profiles, book reviews, columns, fiction, poetry, and first-person reflections on life as a community college humanities professor. The publication also leads the charge in expanding the definition of what studying the humanities may come to mean in the future and looks at potential opportunities for supporting interdisciplinary studies. Um, so the second um, publication that they have is a less formal um, and less traditional publication format, but they have a blog called um, Discourse, which is a very fitting title for it. Um, and they use the blog to promote events that are taking place in the humanities to talk about some of the hot topics that are currently um, going on in the field and also to um, put out news about the CCHA. Um, some of their most recent posts um, were about the work that's currently being done within the CCHA. Um, they are going to be working with the Modern Language Association in planning for a $1 million Mellon grant for community college faculty. So once again, really kind of promoting the ways um, that they can ensure that community college professionals have a seat at the table for some of these larger projects, um, and also finding ways to partner with some of um, the other humanities organizations currently. Um, and then finally, they also have a literary magazine competition, which is held every year. And the point of the competition is to highlight student work from all over the nation, so looking at individual literary magazines from different college or campuses. Um, the competition, according to their website, is meant to reinforce the mission of the CCHA to help shape and strengthen students with their personal and professional growth in the humanities. The um, competition sponsors awards in each of the five regions, um, and they have different divisions for the competition to base, based on how large that community college is and what their budget is. So again, recognizing some of the work and promoting, even at a student level, um, professional discourse. So in thinking about what kind of value um, the CCHA brings to the table in terms of value for the humanities, um, I think that it very squarely falls into two categories, which are one, to connect humanities researchers and students with events that are happening worldwide regarding humanities, as well as really encouraging, again, the um, encouraging professional discourse and connections. Um, and they do a good job of that by listing and linking other humanities associations that can offer support for community colleges and the kind of work that they're doing, as well as um, finding ways to collaborate. From their website, um, the 
um, the CCHA very passionately argues for the importance of the humanities in the lives of students today. Um, and they say, today's students face professional lives that demand continual education in response to changing employment and career options, new advances in technology, and an ever-changing world. The humanities provide the best instruction in analyzing alternative possibilities and adapting to change skills that are essential for continual personal and professional growth and education. The humanities help students to understand culture, their own and that of others. The humanities also help students to learn how to think critically. To ensure this unique contribution to our students' education, the humanities need your support. And that's where the CCHA comes in in, time, in terms of creating that supportive network of professionals, especially at the community college level. Um, and that from there, we can talk about what some of the benefits of becoming a member of this association are. So in becoming a member of the CCAJ, they have two ways. Um, they have individual memberships as well as institutional memberships. Um, and from their site, they say that an individual CCHA membership unites you with your colleagues at two-year colleges across the nation in shaping and strengthening the humanities, whereas the institutional CCHA membership makes a valuable contribution to the advancement of the humanities at two-year colleges. So for their membership targets, they really are looking at professionals who are engaged in work at community colleges within the United States. Um, it does look from some of their sponsoring memberships that um, other professionals can get involved too, but the main focus is on promoting the work of professors and students at community two-year colleges. So um, here's the information about individual memberships. The cost depends on your current status and affiliation with um, a college. So. It's $50 a year for a full-time faculty member at a two-year institution, $15 for adjunct or part-time emeriti or independent scholars, and then $10 for student membership. So I think that the price point for the students, they really are trying to encourage students at a very early um, stage in their academic careers, um, so this is mostly aimed at two-year institutions. Um, to really get involved in this kind of professional discourse and to start thinking about it. Um, some of the individual benefits to having a membership include um, you get an invitation to both the regional and national conferences, opportunities to publish in the, um, in the publications that I talked about before, um, and you also get um, a copy of the Community College Humanities Review as well as the Community College Humanist, which is a um, another letter that they send out, uh, I believe, three times a year. And it is, um, again, tells you about some of the news and happenings going on with the CCHA. And then finally, there are also awards and recognitions that the CCHA sponsors that you are then eligible uh, to be nominated for and to nominate your colleagues for. And then also um, the CCHA has um, opportunities for memberships at, memberships at an institutional level for um, either um, community colleges as well as some of those larger humanities associations. And the cost for that, um, it depends on how large your institution is. And so it ranges from $500 a year to $1,500 a year. And $1,500 a year gets you a sponsor um, status, um, which comes with lots of additional um, benefits. So um, some of the main benefits that you get um, include free faculty memberships that are included with that. Um, and again, depending on the level of your institution, you get a certain number. If you go in at the sponsor level, you get 10. 
faculty memberships a year. Um, you also, at an institutional level, get a discount on entering your institution's literary magazine competition entry. Um, so at an institutional level, that's a 50% discount. If you go in at the sponsored $1,500 level, it's free to enter. Um, you also get copies of the publications for free, again, depending on how many um, people you have, how many faculty members you have, they um, vary the number of the physical copies that you get. Um, they also help keep your institution abreast of uh, special grant opportunities, and they also provide discounted rates um, at the conferences as well. So in conclusion, the Community College uh, Humanities Association does a lot of work to really further the professional discourse of humanities professors, specifically of um, faculty working at the community college level to um, encourage that professional discourse as well as to support faculty in helping their students develop an appreciation for the humanities and um, to get the best kind of support for their projects. Um, whether that means helping them find fellowship and grant opportunities um, or helping them to publish in their review. Um, this quote here is from a 2018 update from the director of the CCHA, Andrew Rusnik, and I think it really gets to the heart of humanity studies as a discipline and what the association is supporting. And he says that no other time in history has the question, what does it mean to be human? been so important and in need of a stable answer. Oftentimes, the humanities get brushed aside for funding um, and kind of have a reputation of being something that's purely academic, doesn't have a lot of real world implications. Um, but anyone who studies the humanities will tell you that's just absolutely not true. And so this association really works hard to help um, people who are engaged in humanities work to really promoting their work making sure that they get a seat at the table for uh, various opportunities and to really communicate um, not just with each other but with the general public um, what kind of work they're doing and what the implications of it are um, for people as a society as a whole. So thank you for listening to my presentation on the Community Colleges Humanity Association. If you have any other questions or are maybe interested in joining or seeing some of the other work that they are currently engaged with, I've listed a link to their website, which is uh, cchumanities.org, um, and that can give you more information about some of the exciting work they're doing and some of the professional discourse that's going on amongst community college humanities professors and their students.